Good morning. Welcome to worship today as we gather together again as God's people and we remember his promises to us, his promises which are true and positive, his promises to support us, to love us, to be with us. In our worship today, we'll also celebrate God's promises in his body and blood in Holy Communion. And we'll be following the order of service that's outlined in your worship folder. Uh, before we start, we're not going to shake hands, but let's stand up, turn around, say good morning to one another, and then you may remain standing and we'll continue our service. We'll follow the order of service that you have in your worship folder. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the promise of God that he renews to you in his love again today. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue by singing together our first hymn today, Before You, Lord, We Bow.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. King is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the and the battle bow to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 25a. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh. the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through, the, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but the, with my flesh I serve the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel comes from St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's continue our service. We'll join together in singing the next hymn. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Bible lesson that's going to be the basis for our message today is written in that second reading we heard. It's St. Paul's letter to the Romans. I'd like to read a portion of that to you again. St. Paul writes, For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, and that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You know, we celebrate again this weekend the birthday of our nation, 244 birthday of America, I believe. And so it's right that we think and remember those great um, founding leaders of our country, the ones, men and women, who fought so hard in order to give us the freedom that, that we enjoy so much today. And we've heard the stories and the accounts of their life. Of course, we've heard those both positively and negatively don't you know? I mean, we, we've heard about George Washington's great victories, but it's also true that he suffered more battle losses than actual wins or victories during the war. We heard about uh, Ben Franklin's wonderful inventions, but we also know that he literally abandoned his wife and children and carried on numerous affairs while he was over in France during the war. And Thomas Jefferson and, and his vision of sending Lewis and Clark across the nation, his writing the Declaration of Independence, 
but we also know that he fathered many children with one of his slaves. It's easy enough to, to chalk it up and to say, nobody's perfect. Even the, the leaders of our nation, past and present, they accomplish tremendous things. But they also, they had their failings. Nobody's perfect. And, and that seems to make it okay sometimes in our minds. I mean, if not for those that we view as criminals and villains, at least it makes it okay for you and for me. If anyone could have been perfect, it seems like it should have been St. Paul, right? I mean, perfect in his obedience to Judaism before the conversion, but then after that road to Damascus, well, it, it's hard to find fault with what he does as God's apostle and missionary in, in his life. I mean, he suffers cheerfully in horrendous situations, imprisonment, shipwrecks, beatings. Um, he's brave and willing to suffer for the good, but always giving the glory and the power and drawing attention back to God. As a new creation... Paul knows and wants what is good. But as a new creation, Paul is very familiar with the reality of evil in his life as well. That's what Romans chapter 7 is about. Paul says, I, Paul, I am guilty of sin. I am guilty for the evil of what I've done. And by the way, guilty for what I have not done, but should have done as well. I mean, think about this for a minute. If Paul struggles with this, the reality is you and I, we struggle with this very same thing as well. Baptized, confirmed, worshiping, communing, forgiven, and yet, I mean, we know the struggle between good and evil in our lives. And yet, we know that we've often turned away from God after the things of our own hearts and desires. We know what we should do, but what happens in our life, really? We know what we shouldn't be doing, but what happens day after day as we're living as God's children? It's easy to find somebody else to blame. The devil made me do it, made Flip Wilson millions of dollars, perhaps, but the truth is, it, it only resonates so strongly because we understand that feeling, because we like to jump on that bandwagon as well. It, it has to be somebody else's fault. It's easy to blame others. And if all that fails, we can even blame God. God, why did you let Adam and Eve sin? Why did you let evil into the world? Why do you let all these people get away with so many things that are so hurtful and hateful? But Scripture, it reminds us of an important truth. See, when we want to blame others, Scripture reminds us that evil and sin resides right here in us as well. It's not all the outsiders. It's you and me. And Paul says it starts with me first as well. But if nobody's perfect, then I guess we're in safe company, aren't we? And then the Word of God speaks to us, to you and to me. The Word of God tells us that we're not safe because nobody's perfect. If God was less than perfect himself, maybe this would be okay. If God was less than perfect himself, maybe he could just grade us on a curve. If God was less than perfect himself, maybe he would say, well, you know what, you're better than most, and so you'll be okay. But that's not the kind of God we have. We have a God who is perfect. We have a God to whom the angels 
flying around the throne saying, Holy, 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 according to the prophet Isaiah, who's given an eyewitness view of the throne room of heaven. We have a God who has done everything right. Our inability to defeat evil, our inability to always do good, this doesn't uh, make us attractive to God. It makes us hopeless before God. Hopeless to live as he desires us to live. Hopeless to act as the children of God that he created us to be. It's, nobody's perfect. It's not an out. It's not an excuse. It's a judgment. It's a haunting reminder that we will never succeed on our own. In fact, what did the prophet Zechariah say in our Old Testament lesson today? He said, we are indeed wretched, weary prisoners in a waterless pit. Nobody's perfect, we say. But our inability to defeat evil and do good, it makes us far from perfect ourselves. But we who are not perfect are saved, not because we're not perfect, but by the one who was perfect. We are the forgiven new creation of God. We are the children he has made through Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Um, Jesus takes the full guilt of our sins and he carries it with him to the cross. He takes our imperfection and offers us the perfect sacrifice uh, on the cross of his life. And his resurrection, it proclaims the completion of God's redeeming work. How God took broken, hurting people. How God took broken, imperfect creation. How God took broken, disobedient sons and daughters. And by his grace, well, sees us as being perfect, forgiven, saved. When God looks at you and me, he sees Christ's holiness and he declares us perfect. Saved from our own imperfections, which is really a nice way of just saying, saved despite our own rebellion, stubbornness, and evil that comes out of our lives. We are empowered by God to fight the evil that's within us. This is exactly what Paul is saying. He says, I know when I want to do good, I, the good I want to do, I don't do. And the evil I don't want to do is what I, what I keep on doing. But I'm still going to be fighting this. Wretched man that I am, who is going to save me? See, the Spirit is sent to strengthen our will and our resolve. The Spirit is sent to work in the family of faith in order to give us power to pray, to share, to encourage one another, to walk in faith, to reinforce the, the reality that we are saved, not because we're perfect, not because we're even good, but because God has loved us so much. We live in a world right now that's divided. It has a divided sense of right and wrong. It has a divided understanding of who we actually are. It has a divided perception of the reality that confronts us on every side. And what happens when division reigns so supreme? Walls are built. Lines are drawn. Right versus wrong and good versus evil. But Paul... Paul cuts through that with the truth. This isn't about good versus evil. Because in reality, we're all on the same side. We're all evil. We, we cannot do good on our own. This isn't right versus wrong. Because by nature, we're all wrong. There is no right within us. This is about being safe in God's hands. Every one of us. Not because we're perfect, but because we live within Christ's perfection. 
God provides what we need today to grow stronger in our faith, to, to go on our daily walk as Christian children. To do what? To, to love those who are not perfect, who are all around us, by the power of him who loved us, who were not perfect. He gives us the power of the Spirit to do what? To forgive those who have sinned against us, because he has forgiven us. He's given us the power of the Spirit to do what? To reach out to those of us who need to hear the words of peace and compassion. Because he's given us the power to see others in a new light. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But we're saved. In fact, God desires all people to be saved. Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And when he cries that out, it's an echo for you and for me. It's our prayer and call to God as well. And then he says, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And our prayer is answered. Our hope is fulfilled. We who are not perfect are made perfect by the blood of Christ. Perfect to go out and share that same redeeming, changing message of love to everyone who's around us. Even if they're not perfect as well. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting Amen. Let's, uh, having heard the word that God gives to us, let's stand so we can confess our faith in the words of the creed. Join with me, please, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Um, we will not be collecting our offering hand to hand during this time of social distancing. When you came in, the opportunity was to place your offering at the entrance, or if you fail to do that, you can also do it as you leave the church. Uh, having said that, we will continue our services then with our prayers for today. In your bulletin, you have a prayer list. And you're encouraged to take this home and put it somewhere where you can see it so that you can keep these in your prayers in the week ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you today not because we're perfect. For like Paul, we're far too aware of our failings. Like Paul was, we're far, we know far too much about what we have done that we should not have done or what we have not done that we should have done. We come to you today pleading for mercy. And we thank you that in your grace and love, you indeed do show us mercy by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to live, die, and rise again, so that we who are not perfect 
might be saved by him who was perfect, so that we who have failed in so many ways might be made safe by the one who came and gave his life to, for us. We ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us today. Fill us with that spirit and with the power of faith. Draw us closer to you so that we may hold on to you and hope when all things seem hopeless. And send us out with that message of love and forgiveness to those who are all around us. In a world full of division, Lord, use us to begin healing and bridging. In a world full of imperfection, use us to share the good news of mercy and joy that come to those who have failed. In a world full of despair, use us to spread the hope and the love of Jesus Christ, who has called us to be his own. Lord, we thank you for your love poured out upon us, and we ask you for the power, for the strength, even for the willingness to share that good news with those who are all around us. Lord, in your mercy, and dear Lord Jesus Christ, we pray on behalf of those who are, find themselves in need and, and need to turn to you for hope. We ask that you would be with them in their illness or trials. Be with Lou, John, Sherry, David, Michael, Kathy, and Brian, with Bill and Terry, Danielle and Steve, Diane, Ray, Mary, and Janine. Be with Stuart and David, with Lucy and with Don, with Gary and Pastor David. Be with Michael and Jack, with Jolan and Pat, with Donna and with all those that we name before you in our own hearts and minds. Dear Lord Jesus, you know their needs, their worries, their concerns, their fears. We ask that you would be with them, comfort them with your presence, assure them of your love, and give them the confidence of knowing they are never alone, but you are always by their side. Grant them health and healing, strength and recovery, if it be your will. But above all, remind them of your love that fills their lives. Lord, in your mercy... Dear Lord Jesus, we pray for Donna Hansen who moved this week to a new home and we ask that you would be with her in the midst of so much change and upheaval, reminder of the one thing that does not change, your love for her and your presence in her life. Uh, Lord, help her feel comfortable and find a home in her new place and give her your presence and peace in all that she faces. Keep her safe from all illness and harm. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, dear Jesus, we pray for Pastor Robert and the people of our Savior Lutheran in New York who are caring for people in the midst of this pandemic. Give them strength and hope, even in the midst of so much loss and hurt that's around. Uh, remind them that while they are not perfect, you have called them to be your own in your perfection. And you send them out with the same good news of love to those that they come into contact with. Strengthen them in these days and, and give them your peace in the midst of so much that tries to take that peace away from their life. Lord, in your mercy... And, O oh Lord, we praise you that you created us for freedom in your creation and that you have recreated us for freedom by your gospel. We confess, O oh Lord, that we've often neglected our rights and abused our privileges. We often avoid our obligations in our country and to those who are around us. Keep us, Lord, from selfishness that stifles freedom. Keep us from narrow-mindedness that limits freedom from hatred that destroys freedom, and, and enable men and women everywhere uh, in this world to live under free governments so they can hear the true freedom of your gospel and know the true freedom of your life, death, and resurrection. Bless our nation and, and keep it safe uh, by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. And Jesus, we pray for those who are hurting today, for the family of Marge and for the family of Doris. We ask that you would be with them. By your grace, pour out your, your love upon them and remind them that the promises that are now a reality in the lives of those whom they love, uh, they're promises that you make to us as well. That when our time in this world is over, we too, standing before your throne, rejoining those whom we love who have departed in the faith, 
will sing your praises and glory. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. And dear Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue our service with our service of communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Will you please be seated? We'll join together in taking communion. If you peel off the... Joy. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of Jesus Christ that's true in your life today and every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's close our service today. We'll join together in singing God Bless Our Native Land. It's our closing hymn today.
I'm glad that you joined us. What a blessing it is to be together again, either in person or thank God you, for those of you who joined us live on Facebook today. I'm glad that you're here and what a blessing it is to be together as his people. A uh, couple of things to remind you about uh, as we continue on. First of all, of course, we want to celebrate. Uh, today, Eileen uh, is celebrating her birthday today, and Frank Witten uh, later on this week. Um, and then finally, Susan and Robin will have their anniversary this week, too. Let's offer them our prayers and praise. Um, during this coming week, uh, we'll continue with our Wednesday morning Bible class. Remember, that's an online class. We're in the Apostles' Creed, and you can find information that's emailed out to you each week about that. A um, couple of other, other announcements. Terry, uh, you had something that you wanted to say. We're going to need you to... Uh, I need some help this week with a, a fairly big project. We need to relocate 10 round tables from this building down to the community center and 13 of the um, rectangular tables from the rec center, uh, the community center, uh, up to here. And I envision maybe three ways to do that. The easiest way is if we have a trailer, something like a landscape trailer, uh, where we could uh, roll the table carts up the ramp and um, take them down there. And in one round trip, we could get it done. Uh, the less easier way to do it is to get some pickup trucks and some folks to load the tables in the pickup trucks and make several trips down and back. Uh, the least <laughs> favorite way would be to um, maybe roll the table carts down to the edge of the uh, parking lot and then have some folks ferry them over from, from there. So if you Let's not go there. We're going to focus on one of the other two. <laughs> if, you've, if you've got a, a trailer and, and a tow vehicle or a pickup truck, uh, or as the saying goes, a, a strong back and a weak mind, you can volunteer to help uh, doing that. And we need to do it by next Saturday morning. Before so, next Saturday before morning. Before next Saturday morning. So, so if you will see me uh, after the service, or those of you at home, I know who you are. <laughs> uh, if you would just call me or uh, text or email, um, we'll get this knocked out. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. Catherine. Catherine's going to share with us, I think, She's got her mission of the month on mind. Okay, so if y'all can grab out y'all's pink slip out of your bulletin. This is your mission of the month slip, so it's going to be in your bulletin from now on. Um, it's pink, so it's bright. And it says that this month that we're supporting the Oconee Valley Healthcare Little Free Pantry. So if you don't know what a free pantry is, that is a little place where it's like one of those book boxes where you can take a book and get a book, but it's for food and other goods. So this month, we're going to be helping them restock or fill their pantry, and then any extra donations will keep restocking the pantry so that more people can use it. So the things that we are collecting are canned vegetables and pasta products, snack bars, diapers and wipes of any size, and shampoo, conditioner, body wash. If you have something else that you're like, I'd really like to bring this. Just let me know. My email's at the bottom. And so we'll be collecting things through the month of July. And your donations can come. There's a bin outside of church that's gray and green, and there's a bin inside of church that's gray and green. So feel free to drop them in there. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the last thing is just uh, portals of prayer. The new quarter started. So if you would like to pick up, if you don't have it yet at home, we do have some inside uh, in the narthex, but then we also have some in a plastic container under the drive through if you forget today. Okay? Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting us online. 
God bless you as you celebrate uh, this holiday weekend, and, and get, may God bring us together again in the future. Remember, we're going to go out here in the east door. Uh, there's a garbage can there for your uh, communion supplies, and, and then um, God bless you until we come together again. Thank you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.